junkies. An Australian tune to sing, but do a didgeridoo. Come. Wow, wow, wow. Good one. Didgeridoo, The film review is True History of the Kelly Gang, starring George McKay, who we all remember and love <laughs> from 1917. Captain Fantastic. Captain Fantastic. Also co starring Russell Crowe. Yes. A la Gladiator. Nicholas Holt, one of your favourites. My favourite. Playing Against Type. Playing Against Type. Essie Davis. Babadook. Yeah. Babadook, that that's right, yeah, is yeah. It? yeah. Oh. And one of the co-stars, Earl Cave, who is Nick Cave's son. But okay. also there's the girl from Jojo Rabbit in it. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, Thomasina yeah. McKenzie, is yeah. it? Thomasina yeah, McKenzie, yeah. yeah. Thomasina McKenzie as well, girl from Goodness. So, you know, quite a, a quite a varied, talented cast, yes, wasn't it? Exactly. Um, and, yeah, this is based on the book by Peter Carey. Obviously, it's a, a, a film about Ned Kelly, who is a sort of Australian outlaw. Now, I don't know him as intimately. I don't know the story. I know there's the myth, and it was around the 1870s that he was kicking about. Mm -hmm. But um, I know that he's often spoken about in the same breath as people like Robin Hood. Is that He's become a bit of a sort of... What do they call them when they become a mythical Folk. hero? No. A sort of cult um, hero for... For, yeah, for like a Butch Cassidy as well. Yeah, sort of yeah. Thing. Apparently, he was the first person to ever have a, an actual film like Celluloid made about him in 1906. Oh, was they it? made a film. Well, that's of interesting. Ned I know. Did they? I, I don't know where I read that. So, when I went into this film thinking, great, we're going to have a lot of outlaw stuff, we're mm. going to have a lot of violence, and I also thought, I am a big fan of films that kind of part themselves within the Australian outback as a sort of equivalent to the Western. Yes. So I quite like an Australian Western. I like oh, all I that do. stuff. I I like, it kind of gets all a bit deranged and a bit stress, strange and stressful and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, what were your expectations going into this? I was really excited by the trailer for mm. this and I'm a big, is it George McKay? Mm. <laughs> uh, I'm a big fan of his. Uh, I love the way it looked like it was shot and everything. I don't know anything about the Ned Kelly. The story. No, no. no so I didn't know what I was going The cult going of. Yeah, yeah, so I didn't know what I was going to watch. Mm. No. But from the trailer, I loved the look of it. Well, let me say my big thing against it at the beginning, which is not against it, and it's not mm. against George Mackay, but I had real difficulty with him playing Ned Kelly because he's the right. opposite of what Ned Kelly looked like. Now, that shouldn't matter. Ned right. Kelly is identical to Russell Crowe. Right. And that's what he looks like. Big beard, big bloke. Right. That's that's what we So you had a casting him. issue. I had a casting issue. Yeah. Yeah. I think you're right. I think my expectations would have been more a Russell Crowe kind of character. Yeah. I don't know why. He is. That's uh, what he is looks that like. Is that what he looks like? Yeah. I mean, if that's what he looks like, then maybe that's it. But maybe the filmmakers made a decision in the casting. Because my, my sense of what I was sitting down to was I was going to get all that Western stuff, all that outlaw stuff, all that historic stuff. You know, it's set in the 1870s, isn't it? Yeah. But I also knew from the trailer we were going to get a punk twist on yeah, this. Yeah, which was true. And I think in that sense, that's probably the reason George McKay was ultimately cast. Yeah. Because he's he's your kind of non-conformist punk choice to play a sort of mythic hero. Do you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, so absolutely. I think they were purpose, maybe purposely well, cast him. Well, for me, not knowing time. anything about yeah. the story or anything, I, I thought that he suited the role really well. Watching right. it, obviously, I know that maybe he didn't look like mm. it. Yeah. Um, but. I didn't go in expecting him to look a set. I just think that went in expecting him to look that's like interesting. he did in it. And that's interesting. But I, I, I thought it looked like a very dark, it looked like a very yeah. dark film, and I love a dark film. Yeah. And I'm a big I'm fan a of a film that's a sort of period drama, but that takes a very contemporary approach to... Like Little Women. Yeah, like yeah. Little Women, but also even more so like The Favourite, you know, something that twists mm. the yeah. style. So that yeah. the, the, Because sometimes a period drama of any, of any drama, period rather, um, the camera work can become quite hesitant because mm. it's, it's it's simply interested in slavishly representing the time as it was. Yeah. And I thought this did a really good job of giving us period, but the camera work was just cam was just con not contemporary for contemporary sake, but it was just it was innovative, it was inventive. Yeah. It was holding wide shots. It was we were using drones. Yeah, it looks the way I would expect like a Lord of the Flies film to look. Sure. If it were made like now. Yeah. The opening scene was quite awkward, wasn't it? It was the scene where oh, yeah. his mum was having sex with someone and, yeah. and then the boy yeah. so we're seeing really the story starts with the eyes of the very young ned kelly yeah yeah um, i thought he was brilliant the little boy the little boy painted. i thought was phenomenal what I did you think of him yeah absolutely he managed to carry that whole heart first half of the film. he did he yeah. did yeah and, odd and looking as well isn't very it? odd looking but very believable and and I thought his relationship with the family, did you get that sense of the family and where we were at? I thought the family was really well 
drawn. Dunk was really well drawn in the film. Mm. I thought really it really felt their kind of, in a way you could tell that they really loved each other. Yes. And that they had each other's backs, but at the same time it was a very toxic family. Yeah. Like, yeah. They'd yeah. go so to true. ridiculous extents yes. because of how much they loved each other. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, it felt like you got that from the get-go, how, what yes. the kind of, what the family expected from each other. Yeah. Yeah, you couldn't have had a more dysfunctional family, and yet in its dysfunctionality, it functioned. They were kind of happy. Yeah. Kind of. Yeah. yeah. Well, it was there. Was that the bit when the mum didn't let him go to? He get he gets offered that chance to go to a boarding school because he helped a little rich boy That's when right. he was drowning, and when, the way the mum like basically says yeah. no and everything. Yeah. And when that scene was first happening, you were thinking, well, no, you're like, what are you doing? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. yeah. But then he seems really happy with the fact that she chose for yes. him not to. I like being reminded of the Australian history and their setup because obviously what you're looking at here is that, I was trying to explain to Maddie after the film. Yeah, the know, whole this... time I was so confused by it. Whether their they accents. were Australian or if they were yeah. Irish. Oh, yeah, they were Irish. Because <laughs> you had Irish <laughs> accents, you had Geordie accents. Yeah. So and this... there were British people. I was like, where exactly. are we? Yeah. So this is very much back in the time when the early settlers were convicts. And also, not just convicts, but the families of convicts and the undesirables, essentially. The rejects of, yeah. of, of Ireland and yeah. Britain. And I thought that was really well drawn in the, with the character of the mum and them, them trying to subsist on the land. Yeah. And that ramshackle sort of hut. And those trees, the, that those burnt trees. Yeah, the burnt, burnt trees, trees. Yeah. which were sort of really... I loved that. They you know, used it a lot. Yeah. And it reminded me of like that film with Donald Pleasance, all about the kangaroos, whatever that film was. I watched it at your place. You know, it reminded me of some of those, those great films, the Jenny Agatha film, where, where they would she'd wander around the outback. So you've mm. got all that being delivered too. The young Ned Kelly sort of finds himself being essentially what? Sold off to Russell yeah, Crowe. Yeah, yeah, to yeah. Russell Crowe. Yeah. And I thought that was really cleverly done because we were kept in the dark with that process. Yeah, yeah I yeah. felt like you were in the same boat as him because you, don't, you yes. were just kind of following him. The whole yeah. time. Well, you kind of, I felt we were looking at Russell Crowe. I thought Russell Crowe was, what did we think of Russell Crowe? I, I thought he was going to be, in it. he was really good. I mean, he wasn't in it much. No. He was very good when he was in it. And I love the but fact I that thought, he wasn't in it much. Yeah, yeah, yeah I, I, I felt I like he was going to be a father figure type. Yes. Person. Well, he was in a way. <laughs> yeah, no, he well, was. Yeah, that's yeah. interesting, yeah. But like, father in I world. thought that he was going to be very like, I don't know, paternal, and I thought that he was kind of going to be safe with him, but he turned yeah. out being kind of the reason why. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 He goes yeah. off the rails. Yeah. Except uh, his mother was the reason he went off the rails, don't you think? I mean, his mother. Oh, yeah. yeah. Right yeah. Yeah. down to it. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And I felt his desire for paternal protection from yeah. Russell Crowe. So I was found myself looking at Russell Crowe benevolently and then just very slowly you began to realise, hang on a minute, not a he's not the path. full you know, no. not the full ticket no, here and everything not. that's going on here is, isn't particularly pleasant, is yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. Um, and you, it you know, was sad as well because you saw the kind of light in the little boy's eyes kind of yes. go as well. Because he's very good, the little boy acting that kind of like, you know, and the light in his eyes going is an absolutely apt description. It's yeah, like he lost his, his innocence like when uh, idolised Russell Crowe's yeah. character. You just saw him lose respect. Oh, for I see. Yeah. Yes, yeah. yes, yes, yes. Because he was handed the gun in that situation. Again, it's very cleverly structured because you could easily make a film where you just hate the, the outlaw, or the outlaw is vicious and and is 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 ruthless and all that sort of stuff. And Russell Crowe is the sort of ruthless violence, if you like. In, but, in one sense. In one sense. But what they quite quickly established is the fact that actually the police and the authorities, played by Nicholas Holt and Charlie Hunnam, um, are incredibly malevolent themselves. They might be the law, yeah. but the illegality of behaviour and the sort of criminality yeah. is rife, isn't it? Yeah. And I thought it did a really good job of, of presenting that. Because the people, because of their Irish descent and because of the fact of who went over to Australia, mm. they're treated as... Vermin. Oh, absolutely. They're treated vermin. absolutely worse than vermin. You didn't trust so. any of the Englishmen in the Not at no. all. Because this has got an 18 certificate. And there was a, a really, really, really tightening sense of uncontrollability yeah. at the fringes. Because if you know that the, the law is not protecting you, mm -hmm. it really gave credence to the ricocheting madness in a sense of yeah. George McKay's character and, yeah. and, and how he kind of makes the choices that he makes, didn't you think? Yeah, no, definitely. Yeah. Because his relationship with his mother is so toxic mm. and because she's so mad so I mean, she's sold him yeah but she's also mad in the sense yes. that she gets madder with each thing we see her and yes. she gets more aggressive yeah and um i felt that it would have been slightly better or the police the british people would have been slightly better if she hadn't been so mad the australians have a thing with old ladies, like granny, mad grannies. They do right. it in Animal... The, uh, oh, um, Animal Kingdom. Animal Kingdom. I mean, I've seen it before. Mm. And um, 
I don't know. And yeah, I don't like... know. I don't know if I agree. I thought her wildness and her craziness, I, I, th I felt she was every man's equal in some ways. Did you? In that sort of uh, feral manner. Yeah. I felt that, I mean, although she was unfortunately having sex with this guy, I felt she was very much kind of in, in her own way in control in that way yes. that a wily woman was. I mean, she was trying yeah. to survive. Yeah. I thought she was incredibly powerful. I mean, she's really stuck with me, that actress and Has that she? character. I mean, quite hauntingly so. I was like, bloody hell, you know, she's, mm. she's made fucking stern stuff. Well, it's an amazing performance. It's an amazing performance, yeah, isn't absolutely. it? She is, she is remarkable. What did we what think about of, Nicholas Hull? I was going to say, exactly. What did, tell us about Nicholas Hull. How would um, you describe well, his character? Well, so you guys are saying that he's very I mean, it's very different stuff that he usually plays. But the first time I saw him, obviously, was in Skins, and he played an absolute twat in it. Oh, did he? Yeah. yeah. I mean, oh, his, right. his character was still likeable, but he, was not, he wasn't a good person. Right. Uh, okay. um, not on, quite on this level. Like, when I say not a nice person, no. just yes. getting around with loads of girls and being kind of annoying um but it was I, I really liked seeing him in something like this i don't because i i don't think i've ever properly seen him star in a film mm. he was very out of his comfort zone i felt in this performance yes. not that he made that come across in a bad no, way no. Yeah. but i mean i could tell that you know he was pushing himself to a level that he usually yeah because his character was disgusting his character has had like oh, his... every i mean he even and had sex with a pony well, <laughs> well yeah i mean you don't see it but the influence no, is no. there's yeah there's a shetland pony I the house and then how yeah no totally. yeah. oh he was very that's good. why he was yeah. so good and yeah. then also actually it was quite like his character in the favorite I was going to say, kind of yeah. Disgusting. Right, that hedonistic kind yeah. of do everything to I excess. I can do anything. Yeah, 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 yeah absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But he was also, I don't know, his character was so clever because although obviously he weren't on his side mm. and he did hate him mm -hmm. and all of this, there was something about, I, I always wanted him on the screen. I was just like, yeah. I kind of wanted more of him. Yes. I liked their relationship with each other. Yeah. So I didn't feel like they, he, they entirely hated each other. No. Even though they were yeah. both trying to kill like each other. Were both they were both the opposite sides of the same coin. Yeah, exactly. I thought they were the same person, different yeah. situations. There was an equivalent. But they, there was something I really liked about their relationship that wasn't I like obvious, mean. but yeah, yeah. something that they both agreed on as actors. But it was, okay. there was something about their yes. when they were performing together. On, they worked really well together. I agree. And there was that really clever scene, which I thought was really good, was when I'm... Nicholas Holtz at his family home mm. and he's like he's given the dress to oh, his God. younger sister and then the sister's like on his lap and oh, yeah. they're kind of asking questions like yeah, essentially Nicholas Holtz they're trying to sort of take the child as a bride yeah and there's that massive fight yeah. where the mum goes mental yeah. yeah and I just I thought that that was a really powerful it was a really powerful scene. Well, I mean, for me, one of the most he powerful... He managed to sit there so comfortably in a place where he yes. was wanted. Yeah. yeah. I thought, you're right, there was an intense, sizzling vibrancy to their relationship. Yeah. Because yeah. um, there were quite a few moments where he could have just killed him. Yeah. He didn't. And so yeah. he did Cat, oh, Cat and Mouse. Cat and Mouse. Yeah, a bit yeah. sort of teasing. Yeah, you're true. absolutely right. One of the most agonising scenes to watch, there were scenes of sex, there were scenes of violence, there were scenes of psychological torture. But also, the scene with the babe in arms. There is a scene in this film where there is a baby, a genuine baby, being Nicholas held mm. and I was I felt I couldn't work out if the film crossed a boundary there yeah. I think it slightly did do you yeah it, I think I mean, that might it be worked <laughs> it was incredibly it was very distressing and I really felt for Nicholas Holt because you could see how uncomfortable he's effectively he holding a baby and holding a gun with the baby and the baby is he's clearly holding a gun in distress the baby's, yeah. the baby's clearly like clearly. that baby's not faking it no. yeah. but you could tell that Nicholas Holt in the scene was a bit like okay i yeah. want to put this kid down now because it's yeah. clearly distressed it was That's a awesome. really clever scene because all, because i felt like what was nicholas holt's real uncomfortableness mm. it yeah. kind of worked as his character because i felt like the character knew that what he was doing mm. was bad but he was had too big an ego mm. to admit that so what he was doing was wrong yeah so mm. he was just acting like it was kind of yes oh yeah. Uh, shush yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. so oh, it was just really it was such a clever scene and she was brilliant thomason she was yeah yeah so so yeah the film sort of has it effectively sits in two halves although it's in three parts i think it's there three are three, three, parts. three, parts. three, three parts. chapter headings aren't yeah. there but there's so here's the young ned kelly then there's the sort of you know the teen young adult ned kelly and then there's the sort of him, he becomes this uh, fortified, yeah, nutter who, who mm, sort of mm. has his band of, like you say, Lord of the Flies esque entourage. Yeah. Um, and I felt it, towards the end, I thought this film became really, as it's been said somewhere else, quite hallucinogenic. Yeah, and yeah quite it was very abstract. Yeah. And I, I really liked it. I really, I for me, 
almost that part enjoyed was the last my third. And like yeah, and I think it. I did. Yeah. I enjoyed the and last like, third more than almost the rest I of the film. Too. Did you? It was yeah. all good. Yeah. But yeah, the last part was my favourite. Yeah. Because yeah. I feel that's where George McKay's performance really like. Oh my god! I thought he went to a completely Bang. new level. Well, I've never seen. Well, him okay. Go well, like let, given that we're kind of George McKay kind of advocates and, yeah. and groupies, and that mum. I thought he Unleash the dogs. It, he <laughs> I did think he held it in. I what do you mean he, he held was, it in? He held his emotion in. Oh, I oh, I um, don't. Right down to his tick tock, tick tock, and yeah, all of that. He yeah. held it in. He's thoughtful. He's thoughtful. smashing his head against the table. Yeah, no, no, no. But I suppose I wanted full, full on. I don't know, banging his head through glass or something. I don't know. I sort of. I yeah, think but he might have forgotten. I think the final scene the of the end, shootout and everything. Yeah, I mean, it wouldn't smashing, go to the He's length. talking to that guy. Where it, remember, where they're having a conversation, and then he just keeps like randomly smacking his head against yes. the table. Yeah, and then he puts the just after he's been absolutely shot down, like yeah. all over his body, and then he puts that arm on and just goes outside with the gun. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Ah, blah, blah, blah. like it can. I don't I think mean, he could go crazy. Yeah. Well, what were you wanting? What do you feel? He, where do you think he should have gone to? I don't know. I don't. You see, this is where I'm a bit confused because whether I, I feel by this point in the film, I totally let go of the idea. I felt I had totally let mm. go of the idea that he didn't physically resemble Ned Kelly. That's not important. So I recognise mm. that. But I felt that he had got his own presence, which I'd started to really, really relate mm. to, and I sort of did to the end. I, I suppose in the end, I, w I was thinking. He is, to use Nick Cave's, he's a bit Nick Cave-ish in the sense that I could imagine him as the leader of a punk band, mm. easily. Well, did you know that him and his bandmate, him yes. and the other actors performed a lot of the music in this? Yes, yes. Him and the other actors created their own informal punk band. Yeah. I love punk And some of the music track. they jammed and recorded yeah. for the film. But I, felt... I got Monos vibes towards him. Yeah, 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 oh, yeah, 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 yeah I did too. Gang. Yes, that's true, yeah. But I felt like in a way that, that, that sums it up for me is that I felt it was a sort of mm. performance. It right. was a performance rather than his madness. I don't disagree. I, don't, I mean, that, what you're saying would suggest to me, in a way, if I heard you saying that, that it was quite a self-conscious and vain performance. No, no, I, it I, wasn't vain. I just felt it was, and it sounds ridiculous. And it wasn't to overtly say, method. No, there was just something anodyne about it. Now you two didn't think that at all, but I felt, I really? felt somehow, anodyne. yeah, it was a bit sort of like oh. one note. Well, you know when the when the director says to somebody, take it up to level ten. Yeah. We'll take it down to level six or whatever. Yeah. I felt he was at about level five. Oh, isn't that interesting? I yeah. felt I felt he was kind of seeding no, no, around I, level I'm, nine, I'm ten, nearly at times eleven. Yeah, yeah, no, no, yeah, sometimes I didn't. he went over. Yeah. No, especially that. I don't know if you remember that bit where they're all kind of laughing and that after they've shot each other. Yeah. Those like oh, yeah. art and that armor. But there's a bit. There's a. I felt like his body, mm. his yes. physicality in this performance was absolutely yeah. remarkable. Because if you think of everything else he's in, he's kind of quite like, yes. ma yeah. he's quite mannered and in a good way. Yeah. But we're in this, though, when, when he was topless, like his body was just like... There was something otherworldly about yeah, it. Yeah, he looked like, I don't know, like a cartoon character. He like, did. That's what I said, he looked like sculpted. He, he did, looked yeah. like a you're sculpture. absolutely right. He looked now, that was all, I felt like there was, when where you think he was not taking up to a yeah. 10. I think that was him like suppressing. Yeah. Not, okay. not suppressing his performance. I saw oh. it as him suppressing as the character, his yes. anger. And yeah. then that's why in the third yeah, I think part, I did too. he completely released it. I didn't see it as the as George McKay yeah. suppressing his performance. Yeah, yeah, I really liked the way he looked by the end. I mean, what I, did we think, I loved what the did bit we think where of... he was all like black. And, yeah, 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 it was and very Lord of the Flies. Like, what did you think of all of the thin. female clothing? Yeah. There was that lovely scene where I can't remember which oh, character was. Someone yeah, no, said, that's the boy from Envy, I think. That oh, right, and he says yeah, something along the lines like, you know, there's nothing madder or scarier than, than madness. Than, than madness nothing scares a man more than madness. Madness, but then madness dressed up in clothes. Yeah, the clothes is the next level, isn't it? Yeah, it, it is. But then there have been some sort of um, remarks about the fact that, because I think... I thought Ned, it was interesting about masculinity, Ned though. Kelly was considered think? bisexual, I think, at the time. Was he? He, he was. Oh, right. But then I think some people have said that... Because there were well, the questions about Ned Kelly's dad, weren't there? Yeah. They kept asking, why did he wear dresses? Yeah, and I think that mm. the film makes it clear that in that statement, that we're not wearing them because we're gay, we're wearing them because we want to frighten the But enemy. I felt they were hiding something. I yeah, really liked yes, that. No, that's I, really, what, I really liked the the whole masculinity oh, I did too. It. <laughs> I did. Because, because although they were very masculine, because yeah. they were very angry and kind yeah, of yeah. strong and yeah. fearless, 
the fact that they were wearing the dresses and they had very like all of the boys had very kind of close relationships yes. they just don't see men Quite having intimate. because yeah, of that the fear of seeming gay. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. Like his stoned friend really was I yeah, felt his were, sadness were, so keenly when yeah. he knew that Ned Kelly was just going to Also far. like the really yeah. nice moment yes. when they were trying to keep warm and they were in the bed together. Yes. And I liked how yeah. they just made it seem made it normal as it should be in real life. Yeah, yeah. That a man can be that close with another man yeah. without being anything else. Because yes. as a girl, I could like, Lie sleep, like that I with could a friend, sleep with yeah. my girlfriend and nobody would even yeah. question if I'm mm. a lesbian. So why is it that when a man would And I think that was so refreshingly modern again to bring yeah, to a did, period drama. Yeah, and they didn't yeah. use it in the film like they were trying to make a statement no it's just no. what it was and yeah. I, I really loved that and I you know and again it goes back to that thing of if you go if, you know with the privilege of time travel if you went back to these times there will have been all sorts of ambiguities around sexuality and male, yeah. male close proximity and all that kind of stuff yeah. I thought it was quite a rich form and I think there is a thing about Australia with its convict culture and, and history and all that kind of stuff. Where yeah, mascul really and, nice. and but there's also a huge masculinity to Australia. Oh gosh, yes. And I think of any film that kind of takes a well, takes a character like Ned Kelly and seeks to sort of even poke holes in the kind yeah. of the, the, the butchness yeah. of yeah. the myth. I yeah. think it's quite a rich prospect yeah. in that sense, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. The the book is written in the form of a letter. Right. Which the which in which the film. Well, was, so was the yeah. film is right in the yeah. letter. Yeah. I love oh well, that's a whole other part of the film that I loved was this idea of his his burgeoning talent to write or desire to be a writer. Yeah. Oh I love that. Yeah. I love well. that. So he was a creative But also leaving a message for his child. I mean, well leaving a message yeah. for his child, but he also also wanted to be a great writer. Yeah, because yeah, there's that bit when he sat with the English yes, teacher. Yes, the English and he teacher. Let him free because he so wants yes. to. Yes. Yeah. And I thought that well, was really that's where it went all wrong when he let that teacher. Go. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah absolutely. And I thought thing. that was quite a rich. And let's just talk about that final scene in the shootout. I mean, for me, it oh, was so, like. Oh my god. It was like Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid on acid. It was. It was crazy. I loved the way they did it. And apparently they, they did do that. Well, that's what I've heard. Yeah. yeah. I mean, Ned Kelly's gang, they put these metal things yeah. on there. But also, that mesmeric shot of their point of view, yes. of all the people shooting and the, glowing, and the white yes. glowing. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it was really But then a bit where it just went all dark and then it was just the gunfire. Yes. Oh, I thought it was stunning it's, in that it was, I thought, And I thought it kept... But, and all was, that blood. There was oh my so God. much blood. So much yeah. blood. Yeah, and see. so many very nuanced scenes that really atmospheric scenes like for example the the house what can we call it of disrepute mm. where virtually every predilection for sexual appetite was, was delivered and was going yeah. on yeah. it really painted those scenes beautifully it was a film that for me kept getting stronger and stronger yeah. and stronger yeah. the, the longer with it went him. on mm. as, yeah. as he got stronger as yeah. he got stronger well, yeah. well I would agree that I, I loved it more and more as it came to the end the second half of the film I liked much more than the first mm. And I don't want that to sound like the boy wasn't good. I thought mm. the boy was brilliant. Mm. And he's, you know, totally the first. But yeah, yeah. I really sort of, I suppose I was growing into George Mackay looking like he looked. Yes. And thinking he was brilliant. But then I can't even put my finger on what it was that was wrong. Because yeah. I agree, the actual shootout and the actual sort of end scene yeah. was I like think where he stepped outside after oh my being God. shot. Yeah, it's absolutely bomb. And I loved the camera techniques they were using, the mini cams. Of, oh, you know, that they had bit the, where it was from yeah. his point of view in the helmet. From his point of view in the helmet. And they yeah. had a moment oh, yeah, earlier yeah, yeah. when they did an ambush where they had the cameras on those brilliant ones where they're attached to their chest. Yeah. And he's running, you know. Yeah, and the head yeah. To, yeah, yeah so. I liked all of that. Okay, well, yeah. let's, shall we sum it up? It was just one of those films where I knew I was going to love it and mm. I wasn't too sure. I mean, I'm a big fan of George. I think that he's a brilliant actor. Oh, I do too. And I'm glad that he's suddenly in quite a few things. Yes, yes. it's his year, isn't it? It really it's is. Just, isn't he it? was really Absolutely. good in Captain Fantastic. Yeah, he was. Yeah, we cool. sensed that. Um, then. The way it looked is how I want like every film to look. Yes, yeah, no, no, I agree. It's so like you're just sat there the whole time and you're in love with each shot and it's mm. just it's so beautiful mm. to look at. Yeah. And I, I absolutely loved the designs that I thought that they, I thought the gang were really, really cool. Yeah, yeah I liked it. They were, they were really cool to look at and I loved mm. the st the style and everything. I loved the land landscape shots, like the bit with those bur the burnt tree oh, device yeah. that yeah. was had and then there was that Gorgeous. scene where it was the flashing white light which was very oh, like yes. a bit in nineteen seventy. Yes. Nineteen seventeen yeah. when he's running through those buildings. Yeah. So that's kind of went where it went kind of psychic. Trick yeah, yeah, it yeah. Did. And although I did love the first half, I did think that the, the third bit of the movie yeah. was the best because yeah. his his performance had reached the max. That bloodbath at the end was absolutely incredible, yeah. and it was so clever to do. So I. I don't know if I remember it right, it was either pitch black or it was only lighting up every time yeah. there was a gunshot. Yes. And that's so clever because it's really easy to just show that 
to just show that whole yeah, scene. Yeah, absolutely. But they were really brave and just kind of yeah. making us hear it. Yeah. It, so it made it more powerful. I was kind of shocked. I wasn't expecting what I got. I don't know what I was expecting because obviously I don't know the story or anything. No, that's I don't true. know who Ned Kelly is. Yes. I didn't know if they were Irish, if they were Australian, where we were. But yeah. <laughs> sitting there and watching it, I absolutely loved it. I was a bit sh shaken wow. up afterwards though. Yeah, yeah. Like, so in love with the film and i thought nicholas holt's performance was incredible as well so i think i would give it a hundred out of a hundred wow. wow okay so i can't fault it oh wow. wow i was expecting from the trailer a sort of punk-esque punky kind of modernistic riff on a period drama thing i was looking forward to a bit of australian outback western mm -hmm. i wasn't expecting to get quite a I think quite a complex exploration of masculinity yes. through the lens of Australian sort of history and myth, if you like. Mm. So it made me think a lot about that. I thought it was an absolute treat to see Nicholas Holt being such a malevolent character. I really, really bought into him. I think, as you said, Maddie, his relationship, their, their sort of sparring relationship mm. was really rich. I mean, I'm with you, Mads. I think George McKay is just going from strength to strength, and I entirely disagree with what you say, Mum. I think he, I think where he was reining it in, it was it was the control that he was trying to exert within his performance mm -hmm. of the character. Um, and I thought where he lost it, he lost it. And I thought there were some set pieces in this film that have stuck with me almost as much as scenes from films like The Joker, you know, from Joker, you know, because yeah. it, they're just so vivid and so yeah. extreme and so unique and not, and not unique by doing anything particularly show-offy. They were just mm. very cleverly conceived, so that whole hideout thing. I thought Russell Crowe, I thought they used the amount of, they, they used Russell Crowe was perfect. Mm, yeah. He was there just as the right sort of influence and the heft of his name and character really bore down on the boy. Yeah, yeah. I thought the boy was remarkable. Um, and I, th I just thought all round, I was really pleasantly surprised. I was expecting to like it, but I wasn't expecting to like it as much as I did. Yeah. So I liked it a lot more. Um, I'd probably give it a 95 out of 100. And why, why not isn't it the extra five? Why not the extra five? Uh, I think possibly because I think the whole film was a bit uneven. And I think because it, it, it rack it's kept getting stronger and stronger towards the end, I, I don't know, I sort of look at the beginning of the film and feel it kind of took its time to get there a bit too yeah. much. Whereas, you know, I just thought... I feel like if we rewatched it, though, we would have Yeah, maybe, the first maybe. Time. Fully recommend going to see it, but Not for warned. the faint heart. Not for the faint heart. No, 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 right from, no. right from the beginning. Right from the beginning, yeah, first shot. This is exactly what I thought. I thought there would be an Australian Butch Cassidy. Right. And um, in, in that they gave us those gorgeous landscape, like, you know, drone sort of shots and whatever in the beginning. Mm. I adore those sort yeah, of things. Yeah. I loved it. What I didn't expect, and because I had just seen this other New Zealand stroke Australian mm. film, which was very violent, and about the same sort of period, I sort of expected some sort of horribleness from the British, but maybe not as much as I got. Right. And then I liked the fact that it built and built and built. I did not not like um, George Mackay at all. I mean, I really liked him, but it, there was just slightly something a performance level at the end yeah mm, but mm. maybe it was just me maybe i've got tired or something mm. but yeah i love the way it was shot i love the way it was shot right from halfway through to the end that was my favorite shooting mm. bit of it yeah it was a true punk film and i liked the way they ended it it was quite a strong ending yeah, yeah it's just, i know it's not accurate but he was a beautiful writer which yeah. is yes. so sad as well i do like this yeah this idea of him being a, an, an aspirant writer I yeah like that. and actually i'd give it 95 too Oh, yeah. that's unusual. You seem to be coming at a sort of... No, no, because it, it was only the one thing. Yeah, but once and you get to the end of the interview, yeah. Yeah, no, no, yeah. I agree. Oh, well, I'm pleased we've kind of yeah. brought you into that. line. Yeah. No, I don't mean it like that. But no, I mean, I th yeah, yeah, no, I really don't agree with the whole George McKay thing, so maybe you've just reevaluated yeah. it as we've gone. Yeah. Well, there you go, guys. True history of the... True story of the Kelly gang. Yeah. For more film and family fun, don't forget to click the subscribe button and make sure to click the bell to never miss an update.